All right. Hey, Fred, we're here. Hey, we're here. And we're playing the game that started the whole thing off. Yeah. Um, yeah, we'll start by playing some uh, Commander Keen. So, um, do you want to play? You go first. All right, I go first. So, yeah, uh, Scott, um, I'm really curious to know how this whole, the whole thing came about with the first Commander Keen. Like, your guys' first platformer together with it software. So yeah, Commander Keen was the original game that really sort of launched Apogee, and uh, it kind of got started with me contacting John Romero, who worked at Softdisk, and um, that was one of these monthly disc magazines that uh, released a, a disc every month that included a couple games, uh, utility software, you know, it was kind of a jack-of-all-trades little, little disc that you would get in the mail every month, and um, I noticed that there was a cool game on there every month, and um, it was written by John Romero, and so I, I sent him some some letters and, and was able to get in touch with him. And um, I tried to sell him on the idea of doing a game in Shareware because I'd already been releasing some games in Shareware, and they had done really well for me. I was able to quit my job, and they were making you know quite a bit of money. And um, anyway, he sent me a demo of a Nintendo game. It was more of a like a demo of, of just like the first level and it really kind of showed off this new scrolling technology that they had and it really blew me away because i knew that that technology uh on the pc was something that was like a year or two ahead of what anyone else had even conceived of doing uh it was something that consoles could do but just hadn't been seen on the pc yet so i was super excited i contacted them and i said look you know the way i make money is i make a trilogy of games you know, a trilogy is consists of uh, three episodes that, that make up the full game. And I released the first game into Shareware online for free. And people send me the money for the other two. Anyway, John and his other partner, John Carmack. So we've got John Romero, we've got John Carmack, and we got Tom Hall. Those are the three I, I was originally talking to. This is before they even called themselves it or anything. Yeah. Uh, you know, we were talking on the phone and stuff. And they, and they were in complete disbelief that you could release a game online and make money. And um, so they said, look, they told me that the only way they would bother doing a game for my company, Apogee, is if I paid them some money up front. And I said, well, you know, I've got $4,000 in my account. How about I send it all over to you? And they said, yeah, we can do that. So <laughs> I sent them a check and uh, they sent me a design for this game called Commander Keen. And I immediately approved it. It was just a little one page thing that talked about this little boy genius you know, running around the galaxy and, uh, you know, there was these creatures called the Vorticons and stuff, but it was sort of a Mario-like world. And um, so it sounded really interesting and it was gonna use this new scrolling engine. So, you know, I, I just, I put, you know, all my eggs in one basket and went yeah. with these guys. These screens, you know, um, this is what Share was all about, is that you, you release a game online and then, um, People send you money. And the thing that Apogee did first was we were the first company to break a game up into episodes and just release the first episode. Mm. Until this time, Shareware was considered a market that wasn't really a place to release games because there had been a few other people release a game online into the Shareware market before and they weren't making any money. But the deal was is they were releasing the whole game. So it was the idea of breaking games into episodes that was like one of the big breakthrough marketing ideas for Shareware. Yeah. And anyway, so, uh, you know, it ended up making the game, took five, six, seven months to make, and we, uh, well, then then it was up to me, my company, Apogee, to release it online, which I, I released on a bunch of bulletin board systems. You know, this was all pre-internet, pre-web. Back in those days, there was things that were, um, there were services called like CompuServe, Prodigy, America Online, uh, Genie, Delphi, uh, and then there was literally dozens of bulletin boards that just individual little hobbyists would run. And you know, a bulletin board might only have one line that you could call in on. Some of them had you know a dozen or two dozen lines. These are the big ones. So I released it to the world that way, and almost overnight, it was like the the dam broke open and orders were just flooding in. Yeah. And uh, like, I think that first month we got something like $40,000 with the orders. And um, so, you know, a large, a good portion of that 
went to id software and, and when they saw their first check they were completely blown away you gotta remember they didn't think that you could make money releasing games and shareware but this proved to them that my little marketing idea of breaking things up into, into episodes it was a totally viable successful marketing idea and um so after their first check they made the decision to quit working at softdisk and to start up its software as a full-time business and uh you know we hit the ground running they uh, you know the next game we, we we put in place was uh the second commander keen trilogy which was called goodbye galaxy and you know went from there and so fred now we're playing the third episode of the commander keen trilogy which is uh called it must uh excuse me it's called keen must die and um so at what age did you come across the commander keen games and and what did you think about them man it must have been around five or six years old um my father got uh, an IBM PC around that age, and uh, and back then the only games you could buy for uh, for PCs in, in Denmark were primarily Apogee games. Those were at least the cheap ones. He bought these packs with ten games on ten floppy disks, and those were basically shareware episodes. So while BBS was very popular in or started to become popular in the United States, uh, the internet was still very very premature in Denmark. So the only way we could get these shareware games were to actually buy them. So people bought the free software, um, but you, mm -hmm. you also bought the discs and so on. So you got something out of it. So I got these packs with 10 floppies each. And uh, all I knew was uh, on each of the floppy labels, it said, um, it said like A colon slash install. Yep, yep. So I just knew to press those symbols on the keyboard in that order and press OK and something would happen. So I managed to get these games up and running. And uh, yeah, Commander King was probably one of the first uh, PC platformers I got played. I played a lot of, of Super Mario Brothers uh, on, on my uh, on my NES, but Commander Keen was a very special experience. Um, you know, it, it, I have the memory of this being the first the first platformer I played on uh, on PC, and uh, I remember we we shared these these games at middle school. You know, I had a floppy of Commander Keen one, and I had a friend who had Commander Keen four, and we would share the games and show off different things in each of them and so on. Um, it was really cool. We are we we originally called them Keen Four, Five, Six, Seven, Keen mm -hmm. One, Two, Three. No one knew that that there was actually you know it was one game with three episodes and the next game with three episodes. And the funny thing is, no one ever played Keen Two, Three. Everyone had Keen One and Keen Four, and that was the yeah. two shower episodes. Yeah, yeah. Those are the the two freebies that we released. Exactly. On.